In this video we move on to automated segmentation, specifically whole body oncology persist and the workflow that the segment tool provides for that. Persist, which stands for the PET response criteria in solid tumours, defines an objective method to assess the tumour burden and treatment response for FTG PET images. PMOD supports a semi-automated persist processing of whole body PET data in the segment tool. A simplified outline of the main steps is 1. A 3 cm diameter reference sphere is manually placed in the right side of the liver. If the liver is diseased, the blood pool of the, of the descending aorta is used as an alternative. 2. The threshold for tumour uptake is calculated from the average and the standard deviation of the activity in the reference region. 3. An isocontouring segmentation is performed at the calculated threshold, resulting in a list of lesion voids. And four, the lesions are sorted according to their peak uptake. Before five, the lesion with the highest peak uptake is considered as the target lesion at baseline and for assessment after treatment. The VOIs that are defined as part of this workflow can deal with severe disease with many tumor sites, as seen in the example on the slide, resulting in VOIs throughout the body that we can then capture in all of the usual ways. Although only a single target lesion is used to assess treatment response in Persist, it's recommended that additional exploratory data is collected and this is where the five hottest lesions come in. So to demonstrate the workflow, we will use the segment tool. And to demonstrate each step of the workflow, we'll start by selecting the Persis tab. This may be named the Segment tab if you're opening the tool for the first time. And then we can follow through the steps following the workflow as usual in the lower right area. The first step is to load the PET data using the tools on the right of screen. We can select Database Loading, and then from the Demo Database, we search for the subjects with name starting PS so that we can select subject PSEG2, the PET CT data that we've seen so many times before. At this stage, we need the PET data, so we select PET 3D. And then we will see the image displayed in the usual way in the image display. Now, in the lower right, we see the next stage of the workflow. The species should be identified correctly. We should choose the masking method based on the available data. In this case, we have the corresponding anatomical CT, so we can use that for masking, and then we can proceed with the CT workflow button. Again, we can load the data in the usual way, selecting database, and for the same subject, we will select the original CT. so that we see the typical fusion display with our two sets of image controls in the top right and the fusion slider below that. A number of masking methods are available in the lower right, one of which is whole body for data like this CT, and this should work quite effectively. So we select this W whole body method, and then we can proceed with the create CT mask workflow button. On the mask page, we see the whole body mask overlaid on the CT in red, and it allows us to exclude unimportant voxels from the rest of the analysis. In this case, we can see that the whole body outlining of the CT was quite effective. Next, we choose the segmentation method from the orange menu on the right-hand side. Other methods are available that you can investigate in our documentation. For now, we focus on the persist workflow. A hint is displayed to remind us of the Control, Shift and U shortcut that we will need to define the reference sphere in the liver. Now we can proceed using the segmentation button. On the segments page we see our familiar VOI controls 
and specific settings for persist in the lower right. First, we should set the units to SUV lean body mass using the shortcut to the left of the color bar. So we select gram per mil SUV lean body mass. Naturally, this requires the subject height and weight to be in the image header. Next, we should identify the right side of the liver between the dome and inferior margin so that we can place the reference sphere. In this case, we can use the MIP. If it's not already configured, use the usual MIP button and I recommend an inverted gray color table. Then we can triangulate the liver before adjusting the upper threshold of the color table and zooming in using the usual controls to see the right side of the liver more clearly. Here we make sure that we're in a suitable location without pathology. Then we can use the shortcut Control, Shift and U to place the reference sphere. The SUV lean body mass threshold for the lesion identification is then displayed on the right next to the ref sphere radio button. And the persist VOIs button starts the isocontouring algorithm to find all potential lesions above the calculated threshold and within the volume restrictions set below that. As you can see, for this example, several VOIs are detected and the list is sorted from high to low SUV peak. The sorting criteria can be adjusted at the top of the list. And if we resort by SUV peak, this will reapply the criteria, meaning that the persist ref liver VOI moves to the end of the list, since that was the minimum threshold that we had to exceed. On the VOI settings tab on the right hand side, we can scroll down to the VOI statistics in overlay section and turn on the display of the peak statistic for the selected VOI. In this case, we first see it for our liver reference sphere. And if we select another lesion, then we can see the peak SUV lean body mass displayed there as well. Next, we should check the image and the MIP for VOIs that do not appear to be lesions. In this example, the high activity in the bladder is a common source of a false positive. We can use the MIP to triangulate, and indeed we see that it was outlined with a very high SUV peak. Using the list, we can click on each VOI until we find the bladder, in this case, the first and highest SUV peak which then allows us to use the usual controls to remove these incorrect VOIs. Then we can check the list again and see that the high activity corresponds to lesions in the image. Note that the brain and the myocardium were not selected because they fell outside the volume range that was allowed. This process of selecting a VOI and removing it if it didn't appear to be a lesion is repeated for any VOIs that don't appear to be lesions. The VOIs can also be renamed using predefined lists. These are accessible from the VOI properties. Where we have a range of options available. A report can then be generated using the persist workflow button in the lower right. Here we see the five most significant lesions sorted by SUV peak and the statistics for those lesions, as well as the statistics for our reference sphere in the liver. The report for a given image can be saved, as well as used in a formatted report. The comparison button reveals a dialog to load previous or baseline results for a direct comparison. And there are additional features that are not covered in this video, such as radiomics measures, 
but more information about those is available in the documentation.